Well, what's going on guys? Welcome back to your Lake Fort Guide. And we're finally back on the water. We're gonna attempt to catch some fish for you today. And here's what I know. We are in East Texas. And we have found that green gold, also known as hydrilla. We went to a different pond today that is chock full of this stuff. Hey, we got frogging rods. We got flipping rods for punching mats. We got chatter baits and we got swim baits. You might want to stay tuned for this one, folks. There's a fish in there somewhere, folks. Well, guys, we're out here today at an undisclosed location, but it is full of grass, as you can see right here over my shoulder, just chock full of hydrilla, some coontail mixed in as well. Uh, it's a lake that I love that I fished a whole bunch in the past, but honestly, this year I haven't been here in a long time. It's been months and months. I came out here some during the spring, but I have not been out here all summer long, and now, we're in pretty much the worst time of year. We are in the fall to summer, or summer to fall transition. We are in turnover. We've seen some turnover effects on Lake Fork even this week. There's still some of that lingering on, some of those brown bumbles, and that deoxygenates the water. But the best thing about grass is grass helps counteract that deoxygenation of the turnover. Uh, it puts more oxygen in the water. I'm absolutely clueless on this fishery. I'm coming out here today trying to figure it out from scratch. Don't have any real good information on it, nothing like that. No current fishing reports. Uh, but it is a smaller lake, so hopefully we can figure it out in a hurry. I do know with grass, and these fish should be shallow this time of year with the turnover type of situation going on, we should be able to go frogging, flipping, chatterbaiting, swimbaiting, you know, just everything that I love the most on earth, pretty much, is what we're going to do today. So I'm pretty excited about that, and hopefully you guys are too. So I'm going to try and talk you guys through what I'm thinking on every fish catch and really give you guys a more in-depth breakdown than we do sometimes as far as how we're going through the process of figuring out a body of water that we're unfamiliar with. So hopefully you guys will learn something today. Let's get oh, after it. Man. He bit that sucker on, did you see that? When it landed, it came out of the surface to eat it? That was crazy, now he's in the grass. He's all hung up in the grass. <laughs> oh gosh, this sport just never ceases to amaze. Pretty good fish. Pretty good fish. It's kind of a big one. He's got a lot of grass with him. <laughs> There's a fish in there somewhere, folks. We ventured off the beaten path and come to a lake that still has some vegetation in it for the fall. Look at that. That is a beautiful way to start right there. That's a good one. Oh, dark, healthy hydrilla bass right there, guys. Oh. That gets your blood pumping in the morning, won't it? You know, I've been lucky enough to do this for a pretty long time now. And, uh, one thing I can tell you about this is this sport always seems, it never ceases to amaze, right? It never ceases to surprise you. I threw a daggum chatterbait out there and he ate it like it was a topwater bait. I'm sure y'all saw that on the chest camera. Hopefully he did. He, fish literally came out of the water and exploded on it uh, before I even knew what was happening. So just a uh, crazy bite and an exciting bite and just more proof that this game just never gets old. <laughs> Awesome bite. Not as big of a fish, but man, frog fishing. <laughs> so all we did was that fish jumped up and bit that chatterbait first thing this morning. So of course what we do, we tie it on a frog and another beautiful fish. Not a real big one, but that frog bite is something to behold, people. Uh-uh-uh. Up 
Ouch. <laughs> He's so little there was no resistance in my rod. Literally left a rub mark on my side. Baby. Just a baby. Well, big ball in the sky is up high now, so we have picked up the flipping rig and we are punching all this matted hydrilla that you see out here over my shoulder. Uh, we're going to do some flipping and see how that works. You know, like we said in the intro, haven't been out here in a while and man, just trying to piece it together. Got here this morning, picked up a chatterbait because that's something I have a great deal of confidence in. I see grass. I don't know whether they're on top or down below. I just pick a chatterbait. It's something I have a lot of confidence in. Got that service bite that clued me into the frog bite. Unfortunately, I think we were just here a little late. I think if we'd have been here earlier, we could have capitalized on a frog bite if we could have figured that out earlier on. Uh, but kind of got lucky with that chatterbait bite. Then we got the frog bite because of that. Now the sun's up, we're flipping. Just been flipping for a little while right here in that same stretch and uh, already got a bite on that. So hopefully, as you can see, miles of grass in this lake. Uh, if we can just pick up the flipping stick and go, we might be able to have a good day flipping. And that's what I'm really hoping. I'm hoping that's what the rest of this show is, is me and this big old rod and that big old weight. We'll have a good time. <laughs> oh, that is part of early fall fishing, folks. You're going to catch something like these last couple that are just look a whole lot like a bass. A little bit smaller, though. Got that one on a little swim bait. Little swim bait. I'll show you guys real quick because I've never showed this to you guys on the channel. And this has been something that's been in my boat forever and ever and ever. It just wasn't ever sponsored. I was sponsored by other companies that had swim baits, so... One of those companies didn't want me talking about other baits, so we didn't talk about it. But, if I can get it rigged back up here, this is one that a lot of you local East Texas guys are going to know. This is a Reaction Innovations. And I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the daggum name of this thing, and I've known it forever, and I can't think of the name of it. Somebody drop in the comments, you'll know what that is. Skinny Dipper. A little Skinny Dipper. Just a white Skinny Dipper. The cool thing is you can swim it perfectly straight with no weight on the hook. No weight whatsoever on the hook. So all this grass right here, I can go right over the top and fish it real slow, right over the top and through all this grass really, really effectively. Dog it. <sighs> huh? Yeah. Good one right there. Little chunk. We'll check this fish out, guys. This is a pretty cool fish. Spot lock us right here. Caught him on a chatterbait out here on the outside of that grass. But if you look at this fish, I want y'all to know something. So check this fish out, guys. Look how tiny his little head is compared to his body. That is a sign of a extremely healthy fish, but an extremely healthy fishery that's full of bait. Little bitty head. Big fat body. That is what Lake Monticello bass used to look like. RIP Lake Monticello. Beautiful little fish right there. Pull over here to a new area. We've been up there. It's been flat calm up there. Uh, it, it's you know more protected, more blocked in up there. Got down here where the water's a little more open. As you can see behind me, got some ripple on the water. Got some wind movement. Hey, so that cued me in to go ahead and pick up the chatterbait, fish the edge of the grass with a chatterbait or a swim bait. That was like my second cast on this grass edge with a chatterbait. So maybe we'll get a little faster bite going here and catch them faster. I've, I've lost a couple punch of fish, which I haven't punched in a long time. And if you punch a lot, you know there's a feel to that. And, and I screwed those fish up. I should have caught both of them. They both felt like good ones, seemed like good fish. Uh, and I've lost a couple of those. So hopefully we won't lose any more and we'll get this chatterbait deal going. We can get bites a little bit faster up there. Even though we lost a couple, it was a pretty slow bite on that punching deal. Got one. 
white fish is black, black, black. There you go, folks. Look how pretty and <laughs> dark colored that fish is. Starting to put a little bit of a pattern together. Let me throw this fish back. We'll tell you about it. So, corners. If you'll notice, we're right here in another corner. And where we caught a fish, there's been some type of a corner, a corner where a point sticks out and it meets the bank. There's been some type of a corner. These fish, this lake seems to be turning over. I've seen some of the telltale brown bubbles and things like that that you see there in turnover. It seems like these fish, when they push to the bank, they've kind of pushed into these corners for whatever reason. But that seems to be the one key thing as far as, I'm not doing a very good job. I've caught, what, five or six fish today. I've missed three. Uh, so my landing percentage on my bites is not very good today. I, I, I should have caught all three of those. It's on me. I missed one on Chatterbait earlier. I don't think y'all saw, but... Uh, all of my bites are coming in corners. That seems to be the one discernible piece of the pattern is it's near grass, it's shallow, and it's in a corner. Well, as y'all can tell, that's gonna be the end of our day on the water, man. It did not go as good as I would hope, but at the same time, hey, we figured some pieces of the puzzle out. I will be revisiting that little gym. You guys saw the vegetation out there. It, it, it ended up being one of those deals at the end. I really felt like Man, you give me one more day out there and I can kind of get them real dialed in. I missed a few key bites. A couple of those flipping bites that I missed really felt like better fish to me. And I know that lake's got some big ones in it, so I'm sorely disappointed in that. But nonetheless, we show you how it goes down. When we catch them, when we don't, we show you either way. Today was kind of a, yeah, we really didn't catch them that good. Uh, caught some little bitty babies, caught some decent ones. and uh, But we got to figure the puzzle out. And, and I think we got some good content for you guys as far as explaining what we were thinking and why we were making the decisions about the baits and even started kind of getting that pattern down in those corners at the end. So uh, hopefully I'll get to make another trip back out here in the next day or two and uh, really dial that place in and maybe we can bring the, at least the GoPro if nothing else along for that. So stay tuned. We might have some more footage coming from that pond and if we can get it dialed in out there, it can be special. The other factor is just the time of year it is. Even though we started getting the pattern figured out, guys, the bottom line is this time of year, typically fish aren't just going to bite real good when you got summer to fall transition turnover conditions happening on lakes deoxygenation of water all the stuff we talk about man it affects the bite there's a reason it's widely considered the worst time of year to bass fish um, and that's kind of part of what we're dealing with too so all in all a lake we hadn't been to tough conditions as far as the the seasonal pattern time of year uh, you know, I'll take the results we got and move on from there, and we'll get them better next time. So, hey, man, I sure appreciate you guys watching. As always, hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you learned something from it. Hope it helped you catch more and bigger fish. We'll see you next time right here. Your Lakeport Guide.